Now, before we proceed to the live surgery, let me demonstrate an easy way of marking the primary axis of 0180 on a sit lamp. First of all, you have to ensure that the patient's head is absolutely straight and stable and forehead touching the slit lamp support. Then you align the first support structure of the slit lamp in the center till it locks and then tighten the screw. Then the second illumination support is rotated and locked aligned. Then you rotate the slit lamp to 0 180 degree, ensuring a thin and the longest possible slit beam. You have to ensure a thin beam to get more accurate. Ask the patient to put his head into the forehead into the slit lamp. Look straight into the light. You will have a slit horizontal beam going across the cornea. Now all you need to do is make this beam 0 180 degree. Then ask the patient to look into the light. Bring the slit beam to a level where the central corneal reflex is in the center of the slit and two edges are on the limbus. All you need to do now is mark the limbal edge while ensuring that the central corneal reflex is always in the center of this straight line. Then mark the second point which is 0, 180 degree and now this forms your primary axis or primary 0, 180 which can be used as a reference to mark secondary angles in the operation theater to align the toric lens. This is a case of toric. So we will see we have a primary marking as described done on the slit lamp. Now we align the marks and we have to mark at 95 degrees. You align the central corneal Purkinje reflex in the center and there you are. Now you have two marks at 95 degrees. Just reinforce those marks. Okay, wash. Now uh, the marking has already been described. Now we will proceed to make a incision. The trick of making an incision here, here is make a linear parallel to RS incision. Now once that is done, we just infiltrate with viscoelastic. The trick here is to go in with viscoelastic from one edge, dip the scleral wound and make sure all the aqueous is drained out. Normal Rex is for sure. Now once that is done, we will notice that uh, the tendency for the visco to leak is reduced. You can either use a forceps, a little blunt forceps, or you can use a sister tone needle. Now, it's a good idea to have a slightly smaller axis when you're doing a toric lens. A large axis will probably precipitate more chances of rotation. So, you see, I made a 5 millimeter axis. Now the next important thing is to do a cortical cleaving hydro dissection. I will just go under the rexis, give a small burst and there you see a wave. Dip again and then reinforce the wave. And the rising of the nucleus is a sign that we have a complete wave. Now second thing will be, when the cataract starts rotating, fluid. When the cataract starts rotating, that's also an end sign of a good hydro delineation and hydro dissection. Now you've seen that we've been able to do hydro dissection. There is some tannus in this patient. You see the cataract has rotated. Now, since this is a soft cataract, I will be having less of tip exposure you will see i will reduce the tip exposure now now in order to avoid dispense detachment it's a good idea to lift the corneal wound and then now in soft cataracts as described in my previous sessions it's a good idea to shave off the floating cortical plate or the pinuclear plate so that you have a clear view of the Nucleus. So we use a very low FACO here. 
and divide the cataract. So you've seen that even a very soft cataract can be divided. Now I'd use the D flip technique, holding the D segment at the junction of one by third, two by third, I flip it. So this avoids the chopping maneuver in the bag and makes it very swift and fast. Can you have it please? A similar maneuver can be done here. You see we flip the D segment. And the case is nearly over. And the very reason our hydro dissection was very perfect, you can see there is no remaining cortex. So no remaining cortex is also a sign of good planar dissection. Nevertheless, we will go and wipe off whatever little fibers are there. Hilana nahi hai, please. So we are using a toric lens here. The patient has an astigmatism of four diopters. Now we instill some viscoelastic into the bag, distend the bag. Light ko dekhega, sir. Light ko dekhega. And we are just going to insert the lens. Now, few tricks while inserting a toric lens is always try and slightly under rotate because uh, your rotations for final alignment may not be possible in the reverse direction. So, you will notice that uh, we under rotate the lens. We have to put it at 95 degrees. So, we will probably leave it at somewhere around 80 degrees to start with. Hilana nahi hai sir aapne. So before the aisle opens, I'll under rotate it so that that gives me enough time to wash my viscoelastic <coughs> and clean the light. Ko ka, sir. sir, please. Sir, ji ho gaya aapka, sir. I will go behind the aisle. There, the posterior surface of the aisle has been polished and clean. Now all I need to do is rotate the IOL in position. So the advantage of under rotating it slightly is quite obvious now because in the final adjustments you can rotate and place the IOL in the axis desired. Sir, surgery ho gaya. Apka light ko dekhe sir please. Aayi chahi bache mere ko. So we will now do the final irrigation aspiration. So that I will always have a tendency to rotate clockwise on your hydro procedure. So that's why under rotate it. So that when you finally doing the irrigation aspiration. Light ko dekhega sir, sir please. Or either you can use a, a virion or an entirely axis. So this video I made for people who are not having access to those equipments. Otherwise, I love the entirely axis on my Femto Flax lens or machine. It's a wonderful method where even post-operatively you can check the alignment of your IOL. Light coating, yes, sir. And there you are. The surgery is over. Light ko sir, please. You will notice that I don't need to hydrate my main wound because it all depends on the wound construction. So there you are, perfectly aligned IOL.